Ladies and gentlemen, this is another episode of the Open Guard Cast. I've been gone for a little bit, going to go over that. But guys, so excited to be back doing this again. Just moved into our new house. This is our new office for those of you guys watching on YouTube. Uh, just feeling really great, right? The, the, the Lord has been good. I've had so many opportunities to be a part of so many different events, uh, like the IBJJF Grand Prix that just happened, like ADCC Chicago, which I'm flying out tomorrow to go do. Uh, really, it's just been incredible. So first of all, the Open Guard Cast is brought to you in part by Restore Health AZ, the number one naturopathic health practice in Arizona. It's helped out so many athletes just rehabilitate through PRP, stem cell treatment. Uh, you guys go to RestoreHealthAZ.com or RHG.Health and give them a call, set up an appointment, tell them the Open Guard Cast sent you, and you guys will definitely be able to get helped out there. So first things first, I um, just want to jump right into the episode because uh, I, I missed doing this. <clears throat> I love the open guard guys. I love, I love being a part of it. Now I got to work with Danny this weekend at the IBJJF Grand Prix. But, uh, like I said, lately I, I've just been moving. We've been doing so much stuff. Uh, my wife is in her third trimester now. And so it's been a very, very exciting experience just to watch the pregnancy progress. Yesterday we had an ultrasound appointment and the baby's completely healthy. Uh, but one thing that about me and my wife, uh, I'm six foot four inches tall, very tall uh, in comparison to her, who is five feet two inches tall. When she was born, she was a six pound baby. When I was born, I was a nine pound baby. Uh, and so our baby, David, who is progressing just fine, his head is in the right position and everything like that, uh, his head is in the 95th percentile. And so apparently that is kind of a large head for, for a baby. Uh, but not problematically so, right? Like it's just familial. Uh, I have a large head even now. Uh, for those of you guys who uh, listen to the show, I might have choked me before. It might have been a little more difficult just to get your arm around just because I have a large dome. But <clears throat> my, uh, yeah, my son has a big head. So <laughs> it's a great sentence. Uh, but we, uh, it's pretty cool to find out all that stuff. And, you know, he, he's, it, Everything is checking out, brain. And I know ultrasounds are not 100% accurate. I'm aware of that. I'm not like a WebMD guy. Uh, but yeah, it's just interesting to find out. So uh, definitely just keeping prayers up that the pregnancy continues to evolve in the way that it's been evolving because it's been fantastic. But we're so excited. I mean, we have we have a baby's room all set up. Uh, I, I've built like these two things. I built a, an automatic rocker and I built this, uh, like this thing that the baby jumps in. I don't know. It's supposed to like strengthen his legs through play, which I don't get. Um, I was a baby once of course, but I don't remember those fun times. Uh, but everything is, man, it's just been awesome. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. Uh, my mom and dad and, and her mom and dad are, are so excited. We're the first married couple. Um, we're the first two like married offspring I want to say gosh why, why can't I come up with the word like Rachel uh, is the youngest on her side I'm the youngest on my side and we are the both of the first kids to get married and to uh, make our parents grandparents so it's just been awesome and I just wanted to share that because that's been just enveloping a lot of the things I've been doing lately teaching more uh, getting back into shape the ministry has been great so I'll talk about that more on my YouTube especially now every Sunday I'm gonna be posting a biblical teaching and just reaching out to the Christians of the jiu-jitsu community to just encourage them, you know, but the IBJJF Grand Prix. So I show up to the Westgate Hotel. First of all, actually, I got to tell the whole story. Um, I want to say, first of all, if you fly Frontier, if you've ever flown Frontier before, you know that you maybe do that twice. If you're a Frontier fan, sorry, but you might fly Frontier once or twice before you stop. I uh, I have flown Frontier a number of times, and a couple times I had a, a, a fine experience, I guess. I wouldn't say great experience because I don't think that's possible, but um, I had an okay experience. The last two times I've flown Frontier have been dramatically abhorrent. It has been ridiculous. So I get to the airport, and it's a pretty bad storm here in Arizona. So if you guys, anybody from Arizona or even around Vegas, I mean, oh my gosh, the Oh, that's part of the story, actually, is, is the crazy rainfall that happened in Las Vegas. But anybody who has been uh, during a storm that way knows that the, the airports get a little finicky. Uh, here's the frustrating thing. I get to the airport at the time of my flight, which is around 4.30 p.m. that day, and Frontier delays the flight by 30 minutes. I'm like, all right, that's cool. That's fine. Delays it by another 30 minutes. 
proceeds to do this four more times so that we're delayed four and a half hours. By the time the flight is done being delayed, because front because I don't know, this only happens to Frontier in my experience. I mean, I've flown American, I've flown United, I've flown Southwest. Shoot, I think I've flown, no, I don't know if I've flown Delta, but I've flown, I've flown all these different airlines and it never happens. And so eventually we're gonna get on the plane. The storm in Arizona had picked up so much that then they had they put us on the plane, sat us in our seats, did the whole flight speech, and then evacuated the plane because the plane was shaking. People were getting there's not. I literally was. I know that we're not going to get taken up off the ground by this storm. This plane is very heavy. Uh, people were almost getting in fights on this Frontier airline plane, and uh, you know I was with this guy named Kimbo who. Uh, Next week, I'm actually, I, I met this guy on the plane. I'm going to get uh, coffee with him next week. It's going to be awesome because I met him. He's an interesting dude. So I wanted to, you know, talk to him a little bit more and maybe make a friend. Um, but this guy, me, me and this guy, you know, we're just like, what? These people are freaking out, man. Like, what are they freaking out about? This is totally not a huge deal. But I realized, okay, I'm going to get, now I'm going to get to Las Vegas. Probably like, I'm probably going to get settled at 1 a.m. And then I got to do a show the next day. I'm like, oh my gosh, like. I've stayed up late before shows before. Uh, I used to make a bad habit of it, actually. I used to stay up really late the night before tournaments even, get like six or seven hours of sleep, and then I'd try to go compete and beat the best guys in the world. But I don't want to do that anymore. I want to get better sleep. So I made the decision. I was like, I'm going to go home. I'm going to spend one more night just you know, eating dinner with my wife and, and hanging out with her, sleeping in, the, sleeping in my bed at home, uh, and then I'll, fl- I'll drive out in the morning. So I do that. I drive out to Vegas in the morning. I leave at like 8 o'clock. I get to the Westgate Hotel, which is part of the uh, Las Vegas Convention Center, which I, I don't even know if it was a Las Vegas Convention Center or if it was the Westgate Hotel. It was a long walk. That is the craziest, longest walk I've ever done for a Jiu-Jitsu tournament. Um, but I show up an hour before the event. Oh, sorry, an hour before the sound check done by the talented crew at Flow Grappling. And Seamus Grady, he's waiting for me. He's like, hey, man, just get here. We'll get started when you get there. Uh, I do this freaking like two mile walk. It felt like uh, there's a point of the walk where you have to walk outside. You have to go from one building and walk outside to another building. It's so flooded from the rain that I couldn't like my shoes, my socks were wet. My suit was drenched because I had to wear a suit, obviously, uh, for the event. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, there was so much water. You know how those 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 buildings have the irrigation uh not the irrigation my goodness they they have the the pipes that the water flows out of for rainfall it was flowing out like the building was flooding it was like whoosh like like i can't even act there's so much pressure in the water that it was flooding the streets faster than we had time to cross the street like we had to make a judgment call like dude we we are either not gonna make this event because of this or we are gonna have to like swim through the water like i don't know what we're gonna do So we make the judgment call. We run, get all wet. Um, And then I show up to the event. Beautiful. I love, love, loved the IBJJF Grand Prix. It was set up in such an intimate space. It was really cool, really fun. And uh, and there was a a very respectful crowd that was hype. Uh, All the competitors were amazing. Right before the event, and mind you, this is just a story. I absolutely loved working with the IBJJF. They give me so many great opportunities. Um... But I found out right before the event that I was also going to be the ring announcer. And I was like, oh, man, I love being the ring announcer. You know, I actually really love being the ring announcer. Um, although I, I, looking back, I'm like, oh, I could have made the right before the app, right before the final between Nicholas Marigali and Victor Hugo. I could have made it better. I could have done a better job with it. Um, and I'll, I mean, you know what? So I, I could have done this. I could have been, here's the thing. I could have been like, and I'm backing up a little bit. I could have been, you know, instead of. Victor Hugo! I could have been Victor Hugo! I could have been like that, you know? And that would have been, oh boy. I was, I'm starting to sweat right now, mostly because I'm wearing a sweater. But uh, they, they told me that, and then right before the first super fight was won, which I believe was between Jackson, the guy, and his opponent, which was Natan Chuang, uh, they were like, hey, go give a post of an interview. And I was like, okay, cool. You know? And so I wore multiple hats that, that event. But man, I loved it. It was so cool. Oh, I love. I, I just, I just was having so much fun. I was having a ball. Uh, so the IBJJF Grand Prix went amazing. I mean, for those of you guys who saw it, you know that Tynan Dalpra. I mean, he's gonna be doing nogi now. That's gonna be in. That throws 
such a wrench in the plans of every competitor in that division because, like, let's say right now there might be people who are more proficient in the Nogi game. Let's say. The way that AOJ attacks and systemizes and formulates strategies against opponents and for tournaments is just, like, you know Tynan, if there is improvement to make, it's going to be tweaked like that, like that. And so I'm just so excited to see it, man. Like, imagine the matchups. Like, imagine, like, Tynan Dalper, JT Torres. Tynan Dalper, Ty Rotolo. You know, if he comes, you know... I know that there's obviously he's, that, that guy's the, the Rotolo brothers and some of the other athletes, you know, they go to one and they do all the different things. But imagine that. Imagine the different matchups that could happen. It would be incredible. It would be insane. Uh, so that's one big thing. Ronaldo looked fantastic. Ronaldo with hair is a different animal, I just want to say. Uh, he used to shave his head bald and go out there and you know what? He mixed it up, got the braids, got the long hair, got the flow back. He's relaxed. He's smiling. It's different, man. He doesn't look so angry. Uh, I almost, you know, now me and him are friends, which is cool. <laughs> I fought that guy so many times. And I was like, man, I'm going to make him smile one day. And one day I did. I made him smile. I made him laugh. And I was like, that's it. That's the opening. That's the door. That's what I needed. Uh, that's when you know a guy's beating you uh, in tournament too much is when you just want to be friends with him. <laughs> like you've lost that guy so many times. You just want to be his friend. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was a fantastic event. I think that uh, Colabate's debut was amazing, and I also want to commend his opponent Eduardo Granzotto for looking incredible in his black belt debut as well. That was you know an awesome situation. Both you guys are making your IBJJF black belt debut. You're both incredible competitors on a stage that's attached to a lot of hype. Just it's just awesome. Uh, Jenna Nalebre went out there, looked incredible as well as she usually does. You know, I feel like really her uh, her main opposition has been Fion, and Fion is. Yeah, Fion, but just really, really awesome event. And then the Grand Prix, uh, Orlando Montero came back. I was so excited to see that. Uh, I feel like, and I love Stefan Banta, but he left a lot to be desired out there. And I know his style is slow. It is calculated. It is very measured. But, uh, you know, him coming in, I think Joan Gabriel, honestly, uh, him coming out of the tournament also introduced a little bit of variability, right? Because, I mean, Joan was great. And for him to not be there and to be replaced by Stefan, who, of course, yes, is his student. But Stefan Banta, you know, he I mean, he won Brown Boat Worlds. He's won double gold at pretty much everything. I really think that Stefan could have gave a better showing maybe with more preparation. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, Felipe Andrews is just so dangerous and so quick. And you got to be so careful when you're going with him, man. You really do. But Victor Hugo and Nicholas Marigali, of course, met in the final. Uh, they, had the plot, they had their plot armor on. And everybody wanted to see it. Nicholas had been calling for it. He said he only entered the event to fight Victor. Uh, and Victor, of course, I think Victor actually had a more impressive buildup to the final than Nicholas did. Uh, Nicholas, I feel like, you know, he he had he had given up points. I don't think Victor gave up anything. I, I think Victor mowed through both of his opponents fairly easily. You know, Orlando pulled guard, tried to make some stuff happen. But once Victor passed, got the choke, you know, he got the Ezekiel from the back. Just really looked like Victor Hugo. You know, and then versus Felipe Andrew, I mean, you rock bottom the rock, right? And what I, I said that on the broadcast, I don't know if everybody got that, but that's like you hit somebody with their thing. You, you like that Felipe Andrew does the triangle. That is like what he does. And then Victor Hugo goes out there and does it to him. Just so impressive. And Nicholas looked like he was warming, he was ramping up. And I think what's impressive about Nicholas Marigali is even if you score two points on him, his mindset is so sharp that it's like, okay, like Francisco Lowe opens up with like this hope inducing uh foot trip and my like, man if he stays on if he stays on top i think francisco Lowe definitely has the capacity to upset the situation now do i think that he is on paper going to beat nicholas marigali not yet but you know there's the there's that hope that you get uh especially as just a fan like and not that i want one athlete to win or don't want um but it's just like there's something about being an underdog that's easy to relate to people. Like you want to see the underdog win, you know. Like Nicholas Margali was the favorite for the event, but you want to see the underdog win just because it's so exciting, it's so awesome, it's so cool to see the underdog win. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, I will. I work very diligently to not display bias during commentary or during anything I do. Um, but it is nice to see an underdog win. I, I think that I could. Most people would agree with me when I say that. 
Uh, but then Nicholas Marigali goes out there, beats Victor Hugo by two points, looks looks solid, uh, definitely locks down and stays defensive at the end there, as he should. Uh, Victor was starting to ramp things up there at the end, even though I, I could tell it took a lot of energy out of Victor to be able to to be able to withstand the attacks of Marigali early on. But I think that they've, you know, the more they fight, the closer it's going to get. And I think that Victor Hugo is improving at a rapid, rapid rate. Uh, I mean, look at he won he won double gold at the IBJJF Worlds, and he looked even. I mean, those were IBJJF Black Belt World Champions that he was submitting as well. You know, um, well Orlando Montero being a European champion, and Felipe Andrew being the most recent heavyweight Black Belt World Champion. So just very very impressive stuff. Uh, but that was the IBJJF Grand Prix. I absolutely loved it. I left home the next day. I came home relaxed. It was awesome. So ADCC Chicago is our is our next event that we're going to go over. It's this weekend. Uh, I thought I was looking at it. Oh, okay. So basically, this event is kind of marked by you know there, there's not a lot of women's divisions uh, with names that have been consistently there. But I will say you know Lauren Sears, she's there. Uh, she is signed up in two divisions actually. So she's there though. <laughs> uh, for the under 55, Tabitha Watkins and, and Taylor Clark are the two exclusive competitors in that division. And Lauren Sears is signed up in that one and the under 60, where she is also met by competitors like Trinity Poon, uh, which is like Trinity Pon, I think, or maybe Trinity Poon. I wish I knew exactly how to say her name. Uh, I'm going to have to learn about that. Claire Butterfield also in that bracket. And I'm going over the names that I know, right? Layla Watkins also in that bracket. The names that I have seen, because when you commentate on ADCC Open, sometimes you can't see every single competitor. So if I don't bring you up right now, don't consider it like, oh, this guy on this freaking... Dude, Helena Cravar is born in 2007, dude. The, like the, the Black Eyed Peas came out with I Got a Feeling a year after Helena Cravar was born. I want you to, I want you to think about that. Right? Wait a minute. Let me let me look at that. Wait, wait, wait. Um, release date. I got a feeling release date. Okay, two years. So it came out in 2009. Sorry, that's a stupid point. But seriously, I just saw her birth date, and I'm like, dude, she's 16 years old. Um, But yeah, I, it's not that I don't care to know you. It's just that it's hard to keep up with everybody. Um, That's why I love being at the Opens. I meet so many people. Helena Cravar is in under 65. Four people in that bracket. Uh, and I don't know. Helena might even do the... I mean, they've let her do it before. She might be doing the juvenile. I'm not looking at that bracket right now. But a lot of... Uh, man, a lot of really great... Uh, really great people in these divisions. I mean, you gotta, you gotta say... I mean, the, the women's absolute also... I think it has... Oh, is there no... Wow, Helena's not... Oh, yeah, she is. She's right there. But Helena, Trinity, uh, both part of the same team. They'll definitely fight because I think the New Wave always has their competitors fight. Uh, but then got to scroll down to the men's advanced uh, divisions, which are right here. No, they're not. There they are. So the men's adult advanced. I was looking at these, and, man, there's a lot of great competitors. You got Joey Deal. Do these and the, and the list of people sign up for this event? It's just crazy. More and more and more people are going to the ADCC Opens, and these events are growing in notoriety. They're growing in professionalism. You're, I'm seeing a grassroots movement take place, and it really is so so cool. Um, Jonah Medina's in there. Josh Murdoch, one of the Murdoch brothers. Just I love the Murdoch brothers, man. Henrique Barreto's in there. Dominic Mejia and Gavin Corbay are in there. Uh, the Corbay brothers have seldom relinquished very much positioning, or really even a lot of uh, a lot of like any points. It's crazy. They're they're so proficient. Jacob Brooks, who's been on the Open Guard cast before, is in there. Love that brother. He's awesome. And I, again, I'm just bringing up I'm just bringing up some uh, some different names. Joey Werner of Croatia. My goodness, that is that's very far away. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't live. I mean, he's he lives in Arizona, but uh, born in Croatia. That's crazy. Alejandro Viner, also a former Open Guard cast. 
participant guest. Elijah Dorsey, a great competitor, very welcome division. What, what division is this? Under 76 is a welcome addition to that bracket. I, I love that addition. Elijah Dorsey is so good. Kevin Buring, very, very impressive competitor. He was at the ADCC Open, and he blew me away. And he's only been training for like three years, I think. Maybe even less. I'm not sure. Michael Sain's in the bracket. Love watching that competitor. And right above him, Michael Liera Jr. That's a crazy bracket. That's a good bracket. This bracket under 83 kilograms is always always stacked um nathan kim good competitor as well watched him before uh sam kilmer awesome competitor out of team lloyd irvin okay this guy anakin mcmahon you might i don't know if a lot of people know him he competed at the i believe it was arizona open as well and this guy i mean i was making you know obviously some star wars jokes because how could you not but uh he's incredible man he is so good he gets under the leg he's he's dangerous he's vicious under the leg man and he's, he's very composed. So definitely very impressed with him. Excited to see how he'll do. And then Nathan Haddad. John Combs is in there. Uh, I love John Combs, dude. He was actually the very first guest we ever had on the Open Guard cast, man. All the way back in 2020. Brandon Bergeron. Under 91. So in the under 91, David Garmo is in there. I know that I realize that's not a very long flight for him. I think Michigan to Chicago is not. I don't think it's a very... Uh, Long flight. Josep Lamana, I remember him. Stanley Rosa. So Stanley Rosa was the very first competitor to ever get a heel hook at Black Belt. Um, and me and him actually had a match uh, a long time ago. And I remember it was at the 2019 Pan No Gi. And this guy, I remember doing research on him and being like, oh my gosh, dude, I'm glad. Because back then the IBJJF No Gi rules were not heel hooks. It was like, it was if you were in the Gi. And I remember looking him up and being like, dude, I'm so glad that we are not competing uh, with heel hook rules because I would probably lose. And then I won by disqualification because he turned the wrong way on an ankle lock. And I always felt kind of, I always felt like, man, I don't like, I don't like winning by DQ. Like I, I don't, I really don't like winning by DQ because I'd rather win, you know, if I'm going to win, I'd rather win, win, you know, dude, that hurt. I don't know if you guys just saw that, but I just hit my knee on my desk. Uh, but I'd rather win, uh, for real. But Stanley Rose is an amazing competitor, dude. And he's strong. And he, I know that he, he trains at Bronx Martial Arts Academy. I know he's worked with Craig Jones before, I think, as well. Um, as well as Henzo Gracie. So, just, man, just really awesome competitor. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Uh, this man right here, I don't know how to say his last name. Abraham Lamontagne. Lamont, Lamontagne. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Abraham out of New Wave Jiu-Jitsu is another amazing competitor. Joseph Watson. Uh, dude, I am ruining. I'm ruining any semblance of of respect that I have within this community with every name that I read. But Mateus Lutis, Sean Yadi Marco, all, all both incredible competitors. Uh, Mateus Lutis, every bracket he's entered save the... I believe the absolute at ADCC Tijuana, he has just looked borderline flawless. He lost to Sebastian Attard at uh, ADCC Tijuana. And what's funny is that was actually kind of a blessing too because he had a flight to make that he was going to miss if he competed in the absolute. So he was debating just booking another flight and going home then, but he was like, you know what? All right, cool. I'm going home. (laughs) Uh, Ryan Aiken doesn't have a picture, but he is, uh, he made second place. And I believe he might have even, I don't know if he won ADCC Arizona in his division. I believe he did. But uh, he got second place versus Mateos Lutis at the Denver Open, which was the first time we saw Mateos back in competition for a very long time. Now, right here, Kevin Burbrick, of course, every single ADCC Open, he's in there. But I also want to say this man right here, uh, first of all, Josh Ramos, awesome. And uh, Evan Rossborough, I've seen him compete. He's a violent competitor too, man. He is just so tenacious. Great wrestling. Expect to see him do some great stuff. Now, a lot of different competitors in the in the absolute. Of course, Damon Ramos in the plus 100. But notice the plus 100 does not include one. Oh, no, it does. How did I miss this? So Dan Montesoyo is in the plus 100. Sorry. I was going to make a point. I was researching. And I don't know how I missed his picture. But Dan Montesoyo is in the plus 100 and in the absolute. So Dan looking to uh, make this tournament not enjoyable for anybody once again. But just excited for that. It's going to be awesome. So uh, now, moving on to the uh, who's number one, Night of Champions. So this is the tournament right here that we're looking at, all right? And the, and it caps off with 
Gordon Ryan versus Patrick Gaudio. I looked for a, a picture of the full event. Couldn't find it. I will be there Sunday, October 1st, the day before my uh, one-year wedding anniversary. So I would have loved to go to Houston uh, with my wife, but not going to bring her. I'm going to leave her home because, come on, babe, really? Like, I'm Jake Watt. I'm just joking. No, I, I would have loved to bring her. But uh, some really great matchups on the card, as you guys can see right here. I'll see if I can zoom in at all. So as you guys can see right here, Mika Galvao, PJ Barch, Andrew Tackett, and Jay Rodriguez are in the 170-pound who's number one title bracket. Andrew earning his shot. Uh, he's looked impressive every time he's ever been on the who's number one stage. I mean, last time he took out Troy Russell very quickly. Uh, Jay Rodriguez of B Team, always so exciting. And, you know, having him in Texas, uh, a part of like what really is like the mecca of showcase no gi jiu jitsu, is an easy decision, man. He's, he's so impressive. He's getting better and better and better. His presence as a personality in the sport is growing. I just think that he is a very welcome addition. And, you know, imagine a matchup between like him and PJ Barge, right? So that would be very, very uh, exciting. I think Andrew Tackett and Mika Galvao have fought each other, but having Mika in the bracket is huge. He is going to be a tough one to beat. Uh, really, like, really a tough one to beat. He was in the same ADCC bracket as PJ Barch. And I believe Andrew Tackett actually was in the 66 kilogram when he competed in the West Coast Trials. Hard to say. But overall, this is a crazy bracket, man. PJ Barch took out JT Torres. Actually was the first person to score points on JT Torres in like a decade almost. It's really impressive stuff. The other bracket, before I go over Brianna St. Marie and uh, Elizabeth Clay, the other bracket is Diogo Hayes, Ash Williams, Gabriel Souza, Keith Kerkorian. Another insane bracket. Gabriel Souza looked incredibly impressive. I think he, it was just in the final of ADCC 2022 that he lost to uh, Diogo Hayes. I believe it was the final between, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was those two. Uh, Keith Gregorian is one of my favorite competitors to watch in that bracket, uh, with everybody included, right? Because he is just like he's just got that style that you just want you want him to win, dude. He's such a he's such a lovely dude. And I could tell how much West Coast Trials meant to him. I mean, I think he met, made it to the finals of, like, several ADCC trials before he actually won. So he was always the bridesmaid. Now he finally made it, and it's just cool to see him in this bracket, man. Ash Williams, dangerous, dangerous competitor as well. And the returning ADCC 2022 uh, champion of under 66 kilograms, Diogo Hayes, in the bracket, too. Not enough could be said about Baby Shark. But just very excited for that. So, Brianna St. Marie. And these are the matches that are kind of announced uh, so far on my radar. But uh, just really excited to see Elizabeth Clay versus Brianna St. Marie. I think Brianna is a killer. And she's super nice. Super sweet girl. Just, like, pleasant to talk to. But, I mean, my goodness. What, what a vicious competitor. Really. What a vicious competitor. Uh, and Elizabeth Clay has been doing it and, and doing it big for a while now, right? An established name has looked incredible war after war with Amy Campo and just very excited to see her take on Brianna St. Marie. I think it's gonna be an awesome matchup. She's a little bit more fundamentals based where I think clay is very creative. Uh, so we'll see how that matchup clashes. This one I'm very excited for Rafael Geddes versus uh naturally the, the, De Jesus, I think is how you would actually pronounce it. Uh, very exciting matchup as well. Nacieli, I think the last time we saw her on the Who's Number One stage, she took out Gabby Garcia. And Rafaela, I mean, she, Gi or no Gi, just always looks so impressive. So, so impressive. So very excited for that one as well. And then the headline is uh, Rafael Lovato Jr. versus Paige Mourinho. Now, Rafael Lovato Jr., nearly gave me a heart attack last time uh, I was able to commentate a match of his. Just so cool to see him. I mean, Elder Cruz is amazing. And they both had great wrestling, but Elder Cruz was hitting some takedowns on Rafael. And I'm like, man, dude, this is just tough to watch. You know, like I, I love Lovato. I love Elder. But it seemed like Elder was starting to pull away. And then it was one mistake. Elder got put in the close guard. Lovato hits him with that classic lumberjack, waiter, whatever you want to call it, muscle sweep takes it back and chokes him and Oklahoma City just st stood up 
and were screaming. It was deafening in there, man. Everybody was on their feet screaming for Hoffer Lovato Jr. It was an epic moment in jiu-jitsu history. It really was a moment in jiu-jitsu history, it felt like. And Paige Mourinho, my goodness, I mean, coming off of a title defense versus Giancarlo Bedoni, uh, displayed some incredible wrestling of himself, displayed a a mind that was formidable against a, an opponent, the caliber of the 2022, uh, I believe, it, it wasn't under 99. It was it was 88 kilogram, I believe, champion. Was it? No. Who was the 88 kilogram champion? I don't know. Why do I not know? Oh my goodness. No, he was. I believe he was the 88 kilogram champion, correct? I must be going crazy, but he was making a mistake. He was the champion, right? And Pedro looked incredible. So, no, yeah, Pedro, Pedro, yes, Pedro was the 88, uh, in the 88 kilogram division. And I believe Tyra Tolo lost in the semifinals. No, it might have been the, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it's 88 kilograms because Kynan Duarte was the under 99 kilogram champion. Moving on, Jake Watson is uh, very, very good at what he does. But, uh, guys, that's that's all I wanted to go over today. So, who's number 120, October 1st? As you guys can see down here, that's where you can, guys can uh, all follow me and, and see the events that are coming up. Uh, you know, I got ADCC Chicago Open coming up. I'm leaving tomorrow, and then my brother's wedding's a week after, so I'm going to uh, put out a couple Open Guardcast episodes kind of in the meantime. And uh, just going to keep on commentating, guys. I, I absolutely love recapping shows like this. I love going. I love putting out the open guard cast. You guys can just uh, oh expect uh, disciplebjj.com to be live pretty soon, man. Uh, it's coming up. It's it's working well. The event is or the uh, the website is under production. It's almost done. Uh, I'll be able to put out content and it'll be able to greatly help out this this ability to to put out more content to guest to get guests on the show and just man to. Really uplift the jiu-jitsu community. Sorry, my ice machine went went off and it was weird. But uh, I just want to put out content, man, and I want to keep on doing this. I want to keep on doing it well, and I'm just so excited and so honored and so blessed. So thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of The Open Guard. Guys, I'll get better at doing this again. I'm a little rusty. But guys, follow me at Jake Watson Media, and have a great day. Go out and do something cool. Love you all. God bless you, and uh, thank you for listening.